Yeah. I think India, India, India time. Good afternoon to you all of you, and uh, here is good morning because it's 2:35 a.m. in Costa Rica right now. I am in Costa Rica. So the topic uh, the title of the topic is medical applications of electromagnetic waves. I've been at IIT Delhi for 45 years. Out of these 45 years, 35 years I spent working for defense, space. and general communication companies and then i realized i think it's better uh, 10 years back that why not switch over a little bit to uh, medical applications of uh, electromagnetic waves so this is what i will share with you in this particular talk now if you look at uh, healthcare in future you know we have a friend common friend gamal uh, and i he was in hospital medical institute recently underwent a surgery so he sent a message to me you know shivan this is the first time i realized when i was lying on the bed that wealth is not health no matter how much money you have it is health which is basically the wealth and he realized it late and of course we also realize it late because we go after money but i think today it's very very important, very, very important if you have good health you are a very well the person on the right hand side on the right hand side you can see you know i think life is becoming more stressful when we were young i think less stress less stress we have we have extremely large number of patients uh, and i think in india it is one uh, doctor per 10000 patients so there are new there are new medical threats learn from new medical threats for example covid now in china we have pneumonia started so we are learning from this so basically you know we would like to have now some non that because we want many doctors and nurses so there are any non invasive diagnostic procedures may be required so we will talk of some of them and then targeted drug delivery systems for cancer we do not need to go through chemotherapy can we target the area where there is cancer and uh, cure it and we also need to have self medical assistance every time your diabetes why should you go to a doctor can you monitor your parameters and also look after your diabetes yourself and we can do remote we can do self medical and overall medical costs have increased considerably especially at my age 70 years so can we cut down using the modern technique so this is what i will basically present briefly so the enablers uh, what we find is these electromagnetic waves which are basically megahertz to terahertz so this is very very important now i'll share with you and also we need computer scientists artificial intelligence machine learning cloud computing Computing and sensors, and sensors which will pick up our body parameters and three-dimensional printing. This is very common now to devise these gadgets. So I will just touch upon some of these. But before we start, some of you may be new to it. What are electromagnetic waves? These are radio frequency waves. We use it every day in mobile. We use it for transmission, TV, satellite communication. On left hand side is frequency, and on the right hand side is wavelength. So this is a simple formula to calculate wavelength. Uh, we don't need any complicated formula. So we have conventional, so have conventional radio frequency, which is VHF, UHF. Then comes microwave frequency, one to thirty gigahertz. Then comes millimeter wave frequency, thirty gigahertz to three hundred gigahertz. Comes sub millimeter wave or terahertz up to one thousand gigahertz. For your information, we, I have been very fortunate that in my group, it is the only group in the country where we have complete facility for doing experimental research up to one thousand gigahertz. Gigahertz. But right now, I think the band which is important is called millimeter wave band, sub terahertz band. They occupy the frequency range, 30 to 300 gigahertz. That this band is very very important. Right hand side are the application. Mostly they are wireless communication. But now applications like drug delivery. Can we deliver drug to a targeted? Uh, then we have 5G, 6G, Internet of Things, satellite. and this is becoming very important area medical devices diagnostic and treatment so we'll touch upon some of these now why are these millimeter waves important why we use this band which are basically radio frequency waves mostly people have been working uh, in research for military applications these frequencies are mostly used for military applications so this is a graph which shows atmospheric attenuation versus frequency up to 400 gigahertz and you can see here Uh, millimeter waves because the wavelength is small it interacts with water molecules in the atmosphere oxygen molecules oxygen molecules water molecules and you get a pattern like this 
so important thing here is we have broad valleys so we can have high data rate links in these frequencies for example 5g will be in this band then we have high attenuation at 60 gigahertz 120 gigahertz 183 gigahertz some of these frequency can also be used for 5g 6g 7g but these frequencies 120 183 are used for security systems you see at the airport so this is tremendous application because of these peaks and valleys valleys are used for high data rate communication will go for 6g here will go for 7g here and this lower bands are 5g now let's look now let's look into variable non invasive sensor based system first of all is apple watch of course i am not wearing it today is an extremely good gadget it uses photo detectors at the back for oxygen sensing you don't need to buy a 80000 rupee machine to check what's the oxygen level i monitor it every day of course plus minus 3 4 is the error it doesn't make any difference then it has a crown here this is a crown you touch uh, your finger to this crown it takes the ecg very accurate ecg i can send to my mobile this ecg data to a doctor and he will check whether everything is okay and then another parameter which we many of us don't know you know when we walk or do some exercises of lungs consume oxygen how efficient lungs consume oxygen is given by this parameter vo2 and at my age i am going to turn 70 shortly it should be more than 28 but uh, in 23 i checked it was 27.6 that is lungs are not very efficient of course uh, lungs can't be efficient in daily because of the pollution but these are very important parameters you can do self monitoring and they are very good useful and then you start doing exercises this parameter goes up right now my parameters which i measured few days before is about 30 so that means is better so you can monitor your uh, body parameters using these gadgets that is very simple gadget. so the next one you know lot of population in india is diabetic so we have now variable sensor based continuous normal procedure is to give a prick and then major blood visit will go then when you take rasgulla the blood sugar goes up you won't know you can't do pricks 100 times so this is the sensor available in india i use it myself because i have sugar problem so i use it today i'm not using it so you just paste the sensor is an applicator which pastes it on the r and on the right hand side it uses an rf link and it gives you the blood sugar level continuously 24/7 and the advantage of this gadget is that you can be off medication because when the peak comes go for a walk or if you have heavy meal don't take uh, another meal immediately so this tells you complete history of your blood sugar 24/7 365 days this gadget is available right now it's little expensive but i think you can get the healthcare these are i have been, been using it for last 2 3 years very important to monitor your blood sugar and reduce your hb1ac without medication so based on this uh, you know my mother was uh, diabetic she had cancer so we were looking at the last 10 years can we have a non invasive glucose meter that other one has a sensor embedded into the skin we use these high frequencies so 60 gigahertz is one frequency we use we take a rectangular wave gun some of you may not be familiar with these terms there is nothing wrong with it i'll share the presentation later you can look at the literature so we have incident electromagnetic wave at 60 gigahertz and then we form a cavity and depending on your fingertip you touch this it has nail it has blood inside it has muscle based on the glucose level in the blood it reflects the signal and you can put it on a console and you can see different glucose levels give different resonant peaks and if you have a computer scientist who can pick up and display these readings you can have a non invasive glucose meter this was an idea we picked up in 2007 but this device is huge potential for commercialization normally academic people don't bother about commercialization they will do some experiment but we thought other way can we develop a component or a device where a person touches his finger and uh, measures blood so that was the whole idea and we did it this is what we use we use sub terahertz 110 to 100 110 gigahertz to 170 gigahertz so we develop dielectric characterization method then develop characterization of tissue because you will have skin you have inside blood a nail is there 
and then we acquire this data and put the output results in the blood glucose the way it's 110 120 130 it can be this so this was a complex project of course done by a prime minister research fellow phd student a girl student she did excellent work so first thing because we are liquids we need to characterize liquid with different water with different blood sugar con uh, content so what we do we use a method this is the measurement uh, equipment called vector network analyzer we have plenty of them in our lab so we did uh, uh, water with different concentration of blood sugar and then move the distance uh, increase the level so we take four samples so they are different heights and this is sufficient to calibrate the network analysis calibration is necessary so that we can measure the parameters of this liquid accurately and these are well documented in the literature then what we do so these are the samples in our lab these are liquid samples with different glucose contents and we put this a probe inside this and then measure the real part of the dielectric constant, real part of permittivity and the imaginary part of permittivity for various glucose levels and this is our database so we measure it so the glucose levels are later used because we have skin also to develop phantoms which replicate blood glucose level measurements within the skin we have published it very recently in 2021 in one of the ITP sensor jet now this is the typical these are blood vessels then this is skin if you see so we use a sensor which is called waveguide it is 6.5 you can google it it will give you it's a rectangular pipe with dimensions of this then we need to form we have skin layer skin layer and this blood uh, layer with different glucose levels so we have phantoms to mimic skin area between thumb and index fingers it's called thumb index space which is this space thumb index space because very sensitive here to subterranean space and then we measure transmission and reflection if we illuminate this space with the terahertz waves we can measure transmission and reflection and this is the test jig we use different sample holders different glucose level create a lot of data which is basically uh, put it in the computer and then you do artificial neural network and machine learning to extract the glucose levels so this is how the concept finally will be so we take this waveguide put it between finger and the thumb and then we do sub terahertz response acquire the data then do machine learning then finally it will display 110 mg it looks very simple it's not as simple as that it's five six years work to reach this particular level this is reflection that means you launch electromagnetic wave and pick up the reflected signal we can also do transmission that means we have two waveguides one waveguide another waveguide attach it here pass electromagnetic wave here we take the reflection and also we take the transmission so we get both transmission and reflection coefficient then do time domain processing neural networks which is well known to computer scientists finally output the results uh, which is you the glucose and uh, the girl uh, she's the girl student who did this and she is now working on starting a startup she's a professor uh, assistant, assistant professor in Rubki IIT she's doing a startup to actually translate this into a commercial product so this is how the result come this is real part uh, versus uh, various concentration of glucose this imaginary part and this data along with the phantoms is sufficient to uh, take out the readings then we use these uh, major data is called scattering parameters transmission reflection coefficient and we convert them to glucose so we take the uh, inverse Fourier transform then we take the neural network and then finally you display the result and it's a famous Levenberg uh, algorithm neural network based so which basically extracts so this is the whole concept of a non-invasive you will have this product within one or two years commercially because she has already started this startup and why it was not there in the literature because millimeter resources were very expensive now there is reasonable price so the second problem you know we looked at is breast cancer detection so what is done if you are detect my mother had breast cancer so we should take her to medical institute and mammography is the thing to hold the breast between two plates and then it gives a image so the doctor locates yes there is basically a tumor and then ask you to go to surgery so what we did we there are issues in that so we did development characterization tissue mimicking models so we may have 
fat, you may have fibrous, you may have malignant breast tissue, so we develop phantoms and again use these high frequencies because they are very sensitive and then acquire data and have an imaging set. The whole idea here is we have the doctor prescribes your breast cancer surgery, if it is spread then he will remove the entire breast but if it is not spread, if it is a localized tumor, doctor removes the tumor but after six seven months he'll call you back sorry there was some tumor left which i didn't figure out in mammograph so decision for resurgery is based on negative margin and positive margin of the tumors what these are i will explain to you and the best frequencies to use these are 110 170 gigahertz now what is this so the doctor slices this and then we developed an xyg we put the sample here and it scans it and if the tumor is in the center like this, doctor will definitely remove, it's called negative margin tumor. But many times, 60-70% um, times, there are tumors which are very close to the edges which the doctor sometimes it doesn't slice. So if we have this sample in the operation theater, so we need a method less than 5 to 10 minutes uh, so that we can find out whether he has left something and it has to be low cost. And the depth typically one millimeter 1.5 millimeter and we have to scan so what we do in this case so we develop various uh, tissues we develop uh, basically phantoms we develop malignant tissue phantom fibrous tissue phantom fat tissue phantom and these are standard techniques we use water agar oil to fabricate this which closely matches the tumors and then we do uh, experimental we use the same waveguide and then have an iris here it's a very small probe which we developed in our lab then connect this probe to tumor fibers uh, this we have healthy tissue collect a lot of data and which is basically used in the sensor and then we automate the measure now this is how the uh, experimental and results uh, theoretical results are done in this 110 to 170 gigahertz fiber malignant fat simulated and major results to give you confidence that we can do we have uh, already published it in 2021 in medicine and biology journal IEEE now the thing is that we have this slice which doctor takes out and then this is what we will do we will XY scan, this is a fully automated process in our lab, we do this XY scan, collect the data of the entire sliced tumor and then this is how it is displayed on the machine called vector network analyzer. From there we go to a computer and then we do artificial intelligence, non neural network, machine learning. Finally, this is, let us say, this is the slice which we cut and then it will image Then there is a tumor still left here which is at a depth of 1 millimeter 0.8 millimeter and these two were not removed by the doctor he can only remove the central tumor so he can while the patient is on operation theater he knows that he has to slice these two portions and this will save a lot of time uh, for resurgery and unnecessary pain to the patient so this is another thing which we are all doing we have already published this uh, in greater detail in this uh, publication now coming to what are the uses of these high frequency signals you know i get many times uh, dental carry and i go to doctor first thing she says root canal because she can't see why is the problem so we can use terahertz so we have a system which is a source here then we have lens this is a polarizer to focus the beam this is my mouth and then i use a camera which is terahertz camera i can find out uh, if the cavity is on top, it is hidden inside, I get an image, terahertz, uh, sub terahertz image. Now, the advantage is first, I know that there is a tumor, uh, there is a carry. The second thing is, is there a treatment required? Dental caries are significantly lossy than a sound tooth. If this is sound tooth and this is carry, this is lossy. So, if you illuminate it with microwave or millimeter waves, it heats it up. And this is used automatically for sterilization treatment. So we probably don't need a root canaling initially because we can treat it using the millimeter wave, which is the electromagnetic wave. So going through the literature, if you go through literature, there's a new therapy now coming called millimeter wave therapy. It has been shown that all living cells inside us generate electromagnetic fields. We don't know about it. And these communications are at very high frequencies and cause of the poor health is unbalanced. If the communication between cells is poor, then you will have diabetes, you will have some other problem. And we need to have 
non-thermal exposure using low intensity millimeter wave is called millimeter wave therapy and you will have some spas now for millimeter wave therapy and research has shown healing effect of cardiovascular diseases diabetes other things reduction of toxin effect using chemotherapy if you have gone through chemotherapy using this kind of technique they will uh, considerably reduce the toxic effect but this uses a millimeter wave source which was 50,000 to 100,000 dollars because it was used mostly for military application but now they are commercially available this is the first commercially available applicator this is 950 dollars from amazon this is the antenna you have and uh, you have various applicators so if you have cancer if you have tumor you want to shrink them you have diabetes and they are documented literature if you use antenna near your pancreas and slowly 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 uh, give small doses of electromagnetic waves within 10 to 20 days your hb1ac reduces proven so you can shrink uh, tumors in prostate skin ulcer and uh, also uh, look at the pain management these are very recent techniques and uh, not uh, known in india but i think in future you will have such things uh, to shrink the tumors to cure diabetes and you can go to google and a lot of literature on these newer techniques to do this now the second one now, the second is why electromagnetic waves for that delivery now on the right hand side you see there are a lot of transistors we can hear you thank you uh, there are a lot of TDT, they say transdermal drugs. For example, you smoke, they will ask you to put a band aid which contains nicotine drug. Uh, so these are commonly available, several types of these are available, but they are low molecular weight drugs. They penetrate the skin very easily. If you put a band aid of nicotine, it slowly, slowly penetrates inside you. But when it comes to cancer drugs, they are high molecular weight drugs, they don't penetrate. So what do we do? We can use electromagnetic waves to help you penetrate the drug and have a targeted delivery of cancer drug to your skin. How it is done? It is done like this. This is the commercial product which is available. So what do you do? You use high molecular weight drugs, which are cancer drugs, hydrofolic drugs, protein peptide drugs. So uh, there's a company called Viaderm. It has a gadget which consists of a drug reservoir. It has micro needles here. You put this on top of your skin, paste this on skin, and then nothing will go inside the skin because they are high molecular weight drugs. So, what is done? You illuminate it with radio frequency signals, and this is the applicator, and then it opens pores into the skin, and the drug rushes to the area where you would like the drug to go. And this is going to be the future how we will uh, put the drug into the skin and very useful for skin cancers and putting several drugs inside the skin using the radio frequency technique. And these gadgets are available for five, six hundred dollars today. But as more research will be done in this area, uh, it will be more economic. Then new techniques, uh, one of them is called Ingest Capsule, it is a very smart capsule, it has a sensor, it has wireless link, it has data processing storage link, it has a power source and this complete packaging, you digest this capsule, take the capsule inside, it follows your digestive tract, it can send you data on pH, temperature, pressure, motility, all body parameters, it can send parameters to an external console and without taking blood and other things, it will tell you uh, certain parameters of your body. Now this pill is very, very important also because now different pill capsules are available which when digested. So there are Alzheimer patients, there are dementia patients, you give them a tablet, they forget to take it and there are no very few nurses who are available. So the nurse comes to you, gives you a tablet and it's a life-saving uh, pill for you. So if you take it inside the mouth and it digests, it emits an electromagnetic wave which is picked up by the console of the nurse and she knows Professor Call has already digested this patient. And these are not very, uh, not very expensive capsules and they are very, very important for future diagnostics and uh, knowing that drugs are taken by patients who are on uh, or dementia patients who forget about it. 
Another type of thing is called controlled drug delivery system. It's called an endoscope capsule. In Japan, a lot of people, because of the food habits, have ulceration inside the uh, intestine. So the only technique to detect it is uh, you do endoscopy, which is very, very painful, and you cannot keep on doing this. So this swallowable capsule is a very intelligent capsule. It has a camera. It has basically microelectron chips. It has an antenna. You swallow this, and we can, using an external transmitter, bring it up and down till it reaches the area where you have uh, ulceration. It has a robotic arm. The recent ones have robotic arms. It sits on this ulceration, and there's a drug uh, delivery, uh, drug uh, reservoir and it delivers basically the drug at the uh, reservoir. So these are very important and this used to be $60 few years back. But I'm sure now the price will be going down because modern technologies are coming. So these are the things which will be there in future and uh, it will help us reduce pain by simply using a capsule which will scan your the intestine and digestive tracts. So we do a lot of work on antennas, so ultra-wideband antennas, these are uh, specialization in our group, we can make every hour an antenna. And if you want to work at very high frequency, then we have different types of sets of antennas. Then if you use a capsule, we use a wraparound antenna, it's called a capsule antenna. And modern day techniques, you know, both boys and girls, they love to put tattoos uh, on their body. But now uh, smart tattoos are coming which are made of ink. It's a metallic ink along with sensors inside. So this is basically for fashion and also picking up your body parameters so that we can give all your body parameters to a console. And this is now going to be very, very popular. You can Google that and hundreds of types are there. The only design consideration is that if you move the flux the arm, it should not change the characteristics of this antenna and there are well known techniques which are there. And uh, we did a lot of work on variable antennas, body centric communication. Uh, it's all documented in 2021. So let's look at, uh, and this is a machine basically, it's at IIT Delhi, we are fortunate, it's, it's a couple of crores, it is a machine which weaves cloth basically, but along with it we can weave metal patterns. So we are trying to make an antenna, this is a micro strip antenna which will receive transmit signals into the cloth automatically using this machine. And then once we take it out, then we put on different parts of the body and characterize it. This frequency should not change. If you put it in free space, you put it on torso, then we put it on hand, we put it on thigh, different sizes to check what happens to the resonant frequency because this is very useful for healthcare monitoring for soldiers to pick up uh, the parameters uh, when they are in battlefield. We can embed them in jackets and also for rehabilitation. I will show you what. So we put it on the arm, we put it on the knee, the knee and then lower foot, we put it on thigh. The idea is to generate a lot of data and find out what type of variable antennas we can use. And what for it, if one of the arm is chopped off in an accident, we can use these antennas to direct a robotic arm on the right side. And depending on the movement of the left arm, it will actually move the right arm. So this is very, very useful for rehabilitating people who have some uh, accidental, accidental chop limb chop off or something like that. So this is a very very important thing and we do a lot of work and it's all documented in this uh, paper by variable antennas and body centric communication. Now moving further, uh, this is another very very important area. You can see that I'm a microwave engineer but I I have to go to chemistry. I am very fortunate because my wife Veena Paul is a biomedical engineer at IIT, biomedical professor at IIT Delhi. So we work closely. So they have been working uh, on uh, RF assisted hyperthermia for enhanced pharmacological effect of lower doses of chemotherapy. You know that if chemotherapy is taken, um, hair comes off and it has a lot of side effects. So can we do targeted one and kill cancer cells? So answer is yes. So what is done basically? We use the copolymer, this is called folate, and then we use super paramagnetic iron oxide nanoparticles as spions. And this is the cancer drug. We mix it together in folic acid, and then we have this folate conjugate spion and drug loaded polymer nanoparticles. 
then to do experiments, we have a 96 plate cell. We put these in each cell. We use nanoparticles only. We use only drug. We use combination of nanoparticle and drug, and then see what happens to the cancer cell. So if this uh, folate conjugated drug with spion is there and this is a cancer cell it releases a drug very very slowly killing few cancer cells in hours so it's very very slow process so it was at this point when we were discussing with the biomedical department that can there be some procedure to accelerate this killing of the cancer cells answer is yes so at the biomedical department at IIT Delhi, we constructed this radio frequency applicator. So we take this metal plate, we have an insulator, and in between is this metal plate. We apply now radio frequency signals. So if we expose these cell plates with, for 10 minutes at 50 watts, very interesting results come out. And these are all nanoparticles. Nothing happens if you take only nanoparticles. And if you take only spion, uh, then we have, then we have effect. little effect then when we take, when we only, take drug, only drug it also doesn't, it have, also much doesn't have much effect but when we take but drug, when we take drug and the spionic nanoparticles you can, you can see all almost cancer all cancer cells get killed up and this has been tried on the animals and the human trials that going on so this way what you can do if you have skin cancer you can inject these uh, spions uh, and then move to the targeted area using magnets, magnetic field, and then illuminate it under RF and it will release the drug and kill the cancer cells at this particular location. So you save yourself from the normal chemotherapy, which is very, very painful and it has a lot of side effects for many, many years. Now, this is what is going to be the future. So, a soldier or a human being, so you'll have some antenna here, you'll have some uh, sensors for monitoring ECG, then you have smart watches, then you have smart textile, all your parameters, which is physical parameters, thermal parameters, temperature, electrophysiological thing, brain wave, cardiac muscle, all this data is collected, and there'll be a home healthcare center with you on a mobile. And you send, you send this data there, high you have sugar, high sugar, it will tell you, please take this, please take this precaution. So you have self-diagnosis, you, so you, self you, self you don't need to go to the doctor. So you have, so you have a self-diagnostic control, control, so this is remote medical services, services will which will be there available in future. But, but if the disease is complicated or parameters not are not favorable, favorable so you upload this. So this, this, so this is why you will need 5G, 6G, 7G, a cloud computer. And the doctor then the doctor can see this and he can prescribe you what is the remedy for this. And this is going to be there in future. Of course, our time has passed, we have reached 70. But for youngsters, this is going to be and this is uh, now happening worldwide. So we also work so just two minutes. I'll be completing on time. So we also have been working, you know, in India, bridges collapse, buildings collapse, and we don't know till JCB moves there, people are all dead. So we develop a Doppler radar. And this is the wall, and, and if there are subjects behind it who are still, are still uh, we can detect their respiration rate, beating, is their heart beating, this using this multi-channel Doppler radar. radar. It's a joint German in project. IIT project. So, so sensors, you develop, uh, sensor, you develop this sensor, which is basically a Doppler radar. You can mount it on the drone. When there is a building collapse, you throw these sensors on the uh, ground. And sensors mounted on the drone can be thrown at the location of building collapse to detect whether the buried humans are still alive. Then you can detect direct the JCB to that area. Yes, there are people alive. And you can save precious human lives. It's very, very important uh, contribution. And this part will be done by Germany. And this part we have already done and published in IEEE Transaction uh, Sensor Technology, IEEE Sensor Journal. Now, uh, some of you may be interested in work uh, what we have done. So we have documented this for the students and faculty and other researchers. This is subterrors technology for biomedical applications, glucose measurement, imaging, skin cancer detection, variable antennas, body centric communication uh, for rehabilitation and uh, knowing what is happening, how body communicates. And then if you use mobile, you know, right now we don't know whether it generates a lot of electromagnetic waves towards you and it may cause uh, diseases. So we have developed new antenna architectures where if you put the antenna on mobile, it will mostly direct the energy towards the base station rather than towards you. So you can have a look at them. Somebody needs it, I can send the e-copy 
don't mind sending, uh, sending it to if you are interested in these areas. So, if you go through IEEE Computer Society 2023 technical predictions, they predict what are the future technologies. This is the technology: remote, wireless, variable technology for healthcare. This is one of the priority areas for next 10-15 years. And I was scanning. I uh, read IEEE Spectrum. If you go through IEEE Spectrum, which is last month, first November 2023, uh, there's a group in Caltech. They work on sensors, sensors and other things. They, they develop this e skin, electronic skin. And, and why they have antennas, they have all those things. The beauty of this particular uh, sensor is it doesn't need power, it generates power from sweat and movement of the hand. So these are the technologies, and uh, you can follow these gentlemen's papers. Excellent technologies, and you will have in future these kind of things embedded on your skin to monitor your body area parameters. And send this data to the doctor so that he can tell you what are the precautions you need to take. So with this, we come to the conclusion and recommendations. Whether we like it or not, we means you and me. Electromagnetic waves are used everywhere. Everywhere. You don't know it, but they are used. And you can join the society, which is Antenna Propagation Society, Microwave Theory and Techniques, study by paying five ten dollars. And there are a lot of webinars, and you will learn megahertz and terahertz technologies. I've been member for those forty years. And today's research requires multiple skills, such as knowledge of basic electromagnetics, antenna engineering, microelectronics, computer science, artificial intelligence, machine learning, cloud computing, mechanical engineering, material science, biomedical engineering. We cannot work in isolation in silos. We need to collaborate with medical doctors because we need ethical clearances as well as engineering profession. And all of us need to work together. You will be everybody if you want to serve humanity and that's I think one of the prime aims of our life is to serve humanity and future will demand very low cost variable wireless devices you won't have nurses you won't have doctors uh, many doctors so you have to have self-diagnostic systems available with this I take this opportunity to thank all of you